Howdy friends, this is your state representative, Tom Dent. As your trusted friend and neighbor, I am focused on what counts, you, my friends. As a husband and parent, I push for a stronger education and mental health system. As a rancher and pilot, I want to help put a sturdy frame on all our natural resources. I sit on committees for many different topics for a better future for all of us. I am asking for your continued support. Please vote for me, Tom Dent, to continue serving as your state representative. This is Tom Dent, and I approve this message. Number 53, Senior Dylan Gross. An annual football clash between two high schools in the Upper Valley that are just under 12 miles apart was renewed on Thursday night in Kashmir. 2018's Parable was also senior night for the Bulldogs, who marked the occasion by showing some love for the parents and families who have supported its players through their years in the program, but certainly didn't find them handing out any roses to their visiting rivals, the Cascade Kodiaks. As the game got underway, the teams found themselves in a bit of a watermelon seed spitting contest, with Cascade scoring on their first play from scrimmage on a 73-yard touchdown pass from sophomore quarterback Cole Warnica to junior Teague Duncan to go on top 7 to nothing and Kashmir coming right back just two plays later with a 67-yard completion from sophomore quarterback Sam Phillips to junior tight end Brooks Elliott, setting up a one-yard keeper by Phillips to tie the score at 7-up. The Bulldogs again blossomed on their next possession as well by quickly hoeing a path downfield and using some of their favorite tools like sophomore receiver Mason Landek as well as Elliott's and the arms and legs of Phillips to set up another one-yard sprout which gave them their first lead of the contest at 14-7. But just when it appeared that Kashmir was putting down a set of offensive routes that would be hard for the Kodiaks to stop, Cascade's defense pruned one of the Bulldogs' primary vines for putting up points by knocking Sam Phillips out of the game, and thus allowing the Kodiak's own number 12 to plant some strawberry fields of his own late in the second quarter. But on a fourth and goal from the Bulldogs' one-yard line with only 20 seconds remaining in the first half, Cascade was called for a procedure penalty and had to settle for a 23-yard field goal by senior Jose Valdez instead of going for six, keeping Kashmir in front by the score of 14-10 at halftime. As the second half got underway, the gleaning of Phillips from the Bulldogs' lineup in favor of his favorite target, Mason Landek, became an obvious blight for Kashmir. However, even though their offense was looking more and more like the pits with each subsequent possession, the Bulldogs' defense came up peachy keen and continuously stunted the Kodiak's ability to clear a path to the end zone. Meanwhile, Cascade's D was eager to reap the benefits of Kashmir's continuing drought on offense, but their over-eagerness repeatedly got the better of them, including off a shanked punt where they were flagged for a roughing the kicker, which otherwise would have put them in great field position but gave the Bulldogs a first down instead. But the Kashmir O was again unable to grow anything useful out of the Kodiak's mistake, and Cascade's special teams eventually plowed through the Bulldogs' line for a blocked punt, which this time wasn't subject to any yellow squash from the officials. With the arrival of the fourth quarter and the momentum back in favor of the Kodiaks once more, all the beans seemed to be on Warnica finally throwing up a long enough stock to reach the end zone to put his team back on top. But once again, the Kashmir defense was lying in wait to chop down any thoughts of that happening. Senior Dylan Gross's interception and lengthy return finally put the Bulldogs' seedling signal caller in good enough position to do some goal line gardening for himself, or so it seemed. Kashmir's chance to score in their third touchdown of the game from a single yard out and potentially put what had become some pretty low-hanging fruit on the second-half scoreboard out of reach was squandered away on a fumble. And it didn't take long for the Kodiaks to start picking the tree once more by mowing their way to midfield on the very next play on a long run by Jose Valdez. Let's go, turn it up some more right now, turn it up some more. However, instead of withering in the face of Cascade's big gainer, 
The Bulldogs' defense rose to the challenge yet again and forced an all-or-nothing fourth down and seven from their 30-yard line with only two minutes and 26 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. By the end of 48 minutes under the lights off Tigner Road, Kashmir's defense had come up plum perfect by blocking any rays of light the Kodiak's offense had hoped to find in shutting out Cascade for the entire second half. A fact that not only helped the Bulldogs win the game, but also erased any impacts of the reality that they too were blanked on offense by the Kodiak's D through the game's final two quarters. Gentlemen! Boy, do I love this football team! Let's go! I said it once, I'll keep saying it! I love this team. Everybody step up. Man, that was fun. Coaches, what else? Defense! Yeah! 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 This is why I like you just got your Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Let's go! Unbelievable. That is a good football team over there in Cascade. Uh, a hard fought football game. Both teams played extremely extremely well in assignment football. I mean, is, we run two different offenses, as you guys can see, but they're both they're both based on the defense playing assignment football, and both defenses came to play today. Uh, really excited about the response that my kids gave. Uh, we talk about our quarterback went down in the second quarter. Sophomore quarter, another sophomore quarterback steps up and does exactly what we need him to do. Chew up clock, hand the ball off, and offensive line can't say enough about those guys. And then obviously, our defense. Our defense made plays when they need to make plays, and I'm so proud to be part of this team. For first-year head coach Brian Bremer, his Christmas presents may have come a little bit early this year in banking two of the Kashmir community's biggest prizes by collecting one bronze shoe and now a Kodiak in a pear tree. Kashmir's hard-nosed 14-10 victory not only won the day over a bitter rival, but also potted them in a position to potentially garner the number two seed in the Caribou Trail League standings to finish the regular season and give them a chance at a state qualifying crossover game next week. In order to get there, however, the Bulldogs must prevail in a three-team Kansas City tiebreaker at Sargent Field in Chelan on Saturday, involving both the Okanagan Bulldogs and, once again, the Cascade Kodiaks. Reporting for iFiber One Sports, I'm Chris Hansen.